All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that was the end of Super Mario RPG. This was Mario's first RPG of adventure of this kind. And uh, this came out back in 1996. And I didn't play it at, on release because I didn't own a Nintendo 64. But through the power emulation, I was able to play it in 2023. And a remake for the Nintendo Switch is coming out in October. Uh, excuse me, November 17th. So I wanted to play this game to get a feel of what um, the remake was bringing. And um, I definitely wanted to see what the game was about myself personally, because um, I I missed it. I seen my cousin play it, but I didn't see him beat it. So I definitely want uh wanted to check it out, and it was a fun game. Don't get me wrong, it was a fun game. Um, you know Mario Bowser, uh, Genos Mallow. The whole Mallow story was cool. Um. You know, even the bosses were, were dope. Uh, Croc, I kind of wish he had a, a bigger presence in the game. But it seemed like he would have, but he was just... <laughs> Bowser going after them. Um, but it was a couple things that I kind of wish they would have did. Um, well, first of all, let me just say that the stories, the weapons, the, the whole adventure of The Legend of the Seven Stars um, was good. It, it was good. I feel like they could have improved on some areas, um, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But for what I got, for what it was back in 1996 on the Super Nintendo, it was a pretty good adventure. And if you're a fan of Mario games, I definitely think you should check this one out um, before or even after the remake gets released. You know, because some people obviously aren't going to play it before the remake uh, gets released. But um, they definitely did a good job. As far as gameplay wise, the only thing I really have an issue with is that there are difficulty spikes towards the mid to late game. So there's a few boss fights where the well you could be at the level you're supposed to be, but then the very next boss you're supposed to face, and if you know where to go, you could just get there and like no problem. But the very next boss you're supposed to face, there's the the difference in difficulty is like night and day. And you know how they have, excuse me. And you know how they have certain games where they have bosses that that are supposed to beat you because it's just a part of the story. That's not the case here. That difficulty spike, they expect you to grind and get your levels up and get your stats up throughout that entire in between that boss and and the next one. And the, the difficulty between the two, like I said, it's like night and day. Like, if I can put a number on it, if you can imagine this boss over here being like level 25, then this boss over here is like level 40. You know what I'm saying? The very next boss you face is like level 40. And you can get to him in like 10 minutes. Um, so it's like, they really expect you to grind in this game towards the middle of the game and like the later later portion and those difficulty spikes are so vast that it, 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 it's kind of ridiculous so i i kind of hope they don't they change that enough to where it's more reasonable in the remake because mind you it's an rpg like you have to grind in rpgs you want to get your levels up you want to get the skills that come with those levels you want to get the stats up as well so that you can better fend off whatever monsters and opponents and bosses that are coming your way but they the the the, the the difficulty gap doesn't have to be this big you know um you know if i can drop a few names uh between johnny and the yardovich uh fights you know johnny was the undersea shark boss and the very next boss that was you know in line was the yardy and it was literally like yardy was killing me in two hits and I beat Johnny, you know, fair and square. So in this playthrough, I did end up using some action replay codes. You know, that's like a, a cheat engine built into the emulator. It was a cheat engine back in the day, too, on the original consoles. Um, it was like a separate thing that you had to buy. But 
that's not the hit on here. I did have, in order for me to beat the game in a timely manner, I did end up using action replay codes to help, you know, get as much experience per fight as well as get the defense up of uh of the of the of the people in my in my party. So that did help massively. Um cut the the time the cut down my playthrough time. But um they did really good. Based on what I've seen in the Nintendo Direct I think they're going to keep the physics, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, with Valentina, seems like they're still going to keep that, so that's, you know, for the fanboys out there who, who was worried about that, I, don't worry, I think they're still going to keep that, but the story of Smithy, they still didn't necessarily explain where Smithy came from, like, did he just fall from the stars or whatever, you know, they, they never explained that, so I kind of hope they do that in the remake, um... In the remake, I also hope that they do something where they add maybe like Yoshi, maybe give you like a Toadstool, not Princess Toadstool, not Peach, but give you other characters to add to your party. Like Yoshi, you know, Yoshi was at the ending, but he was never in the game. You know, you would think him being such a iconic Mario character, they would have added him to the party or something. I mean, you did have to fight Birdo. That is a boss in the game. Um, so maybe they could have did something with Yoshi adding them to the party I don't know um, I think adding uh, maybe some of the, like the Koopa bosses like Ludwig and you know bosses like that I think that would have been cool um, maybe adding Bowser Jr. in there would have been would have been cool but then again bowser jr wasn't a thing at this time so i'm just talking about for the sake of the remake like maybe add bowser jr in there as an optional maybe put you know luigi um you know luigi kind of scratching my head as to how come luigi didn't make the cut but you know uh and there's a few other things that just didn't make any sense um, they have items that one of the monsters are the are, are like the boos like the boo ghosts and you have an item that can like instantly kill them but that doesn't even play a role enough to where you would even have to worry about keeping that because they only give you so much space in your inventory to keep a certain amount of items so one of the one of the things that's a challenge is that you have to determine how many you know mushrooms which is like your hp healing items or your refresh which gets rid of like uh any ailments any like status effects um or even an item that's called like a pick me up which is basically like a phoenix down or like you know it, it basically like revives a dead character you have to figure out how many of each of those items you need as you're progressing through the game because if you have too much of one item and not enough of the other um then you pretty much you know are going to be in a bad situation for example in this run i've had more um i've had more syrups than anything because that restores your your uh mp or like your flower power all the you know all the characters in this game they share one big MP pool, which is called like the flower points. Um, and you know, everybody who uses a, a special move pulls from that amount that's for the whole party. So that kind of helps out, I think it's cool because it um, it keeps. Uh, you from worrying about having to heal separate people so I think that kind of helps um, uh, naturally some of the characters I wish they would have been more helpful because you can tell some of the characters far behind like Mallow and, and even Genos without those action replay codes for me to beef up their defenses the party would have probably been Mario Bowser and um and Peach you know even though 
Genos and Mallow pretty much have skills that you're going to need for certain boss fights, but they fall behind in levels. Like just like any typical RPG, certain characters are going to be stronger than others. But I kind of hope they fix that in the remake where they don't fall that behind in levels and stats. So. But outside of those issues, I think the boss fights are good. I think uh, the story was good. I do think um, there's some things they have to work on again, like explaining where Smithy came from. Why exactly is he trying to take over the world with weapons? You know, I think having a backstory like that would actually be help. I hope that the remake isn't just like a, a remake of this exact story. I hope they add some different elements to it to make it cool. But outside of that, man, I think it's a cool story. If you're a fan of Mario, check it out. If you're a fan of, you know, anything Mario, check it out. Um, it gives you a chance to view Mario in a different light. And it gives you a, a new adventure to enjoy. Instead of, like, you know, the platforming that you normally would get with, um, with Mario games. Oh, I can't believe I forgot. The platforming in this game that they do have, it's kind of bad to be honest with you there are segments in this game where you have to jump on blocks right and if you play like the later mario games you probably know what i'm talking about so there's two platforms and they're connected to together while mario is on one platform the other one kind of rotates around him clockwise and when he jumps on the other one then the one he was previously on rotates clockwise and the whole gimmick to that is that you're trying to move across an area with those two now on the d-pad which is the you know the way that i played it you know i i didn't use the analog i used the d-pad just regularly it's kind of difficult to jump on it especially when you're trying to do like up up right or down left or you know what i'm saying when you're trying to press those corner buttons it's kind of difficult I wouldn't say difficult, but it's kind of tedious and it can get annoying at times. If it wasn't for the save states that that the emulator provided, man, it would have been a lot more difficult to try to get some of these, trying to cross some of these areas. Because, <laughs> especially in like the final, uh, in, in like Bowser's Castle, like you're going to, um, between Bowser's Castle and Smithy's uh, factory, you're going to fall a lot and they put you back in the beginning so there's like a there's an area of like trial and error in places that are very very annoying um so i hope they fix that in the remake <laughs> as well but again outside of those i don't really have no problem with the game um it was fun it was cool if you like mario and you like rpgs check the game out uh, in my opinion, it, it, it does get a thumbs up. Um, it was enjoyable, minus the little tedious parts, but I do like it. And I think the remake is going to, uh, hopefully, the remake improves on the bad and expounds on the good when it comes to this game. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching me play Super Mario RPG 1996, the original and uh, I can't wait for the remake. So until then, remember, be humble in victory, be gracious in defeat, show no mercy in battle, World Warriors Collective. I'm out.